Things are changing here at Footy Leagues around the world. For starters, we've reached over 775 subscribers. Thank you all so much for joining this community and for the support you've shown me over the years. If you want to be part of the journey, make sure to hit that subscribe button, like this video, and share it if you feel so inclined. Secondly, I've decided to abandon the alphabetical order of countries we've been going in since this channel started, and instead, we're going to be talking about some countries requested by you all. While I considered starting off with the first country requested in our comments, one viewer has recently requested we cover what I assume to be his home country, and has requested it twice. So bad memes123, this one is for you. Today we're heading south of Canada and the United States into Central America and exploring the football pyramid and domestic football leagues of Honduras. Footy leagues around the world, footy leagues, heck yeah! As mentioned before, Honduras is a Central American country bordered by Guatemala to the west, El Salvador to the southwest, Nicaragua to the southeast, the Pacific Ocean to the south, and the Caribbean Sea to the north. The country has a population of around 9.5 million, its capital and largest city is Tegucigalpa, and its official language is Spanish. There are three tiers to Honduras' football pyramid. At the top is the Liga Nacional de Football Profesional de Honduras, say that three times fast, also known as Liga Betcris de Honduras for sponsorship reasons. Like some other Latin American countries, Honduras operates two tournaments per year, an Apertura and a Clausura. The Apertura, or opening stage, lasts from July to December, while the Clausura, or closing tournament, lasts from January to May. Ten teams play 18 games per tournament before the top six teams advance to the playoffs, where the clubs ranked third and fourth play in a home and away series against the clubs ranked sixth and fifth, respectively. The playoff winners advance to the semifinals and play against the clubs ranked first and second. The winners of the semifinals face off in a two-leg final to determine a tournament winner. As the league's name suggests, all teams at this level are fully professional. The winner of each tournament, plus the best second and third place teams from the overall table, qualify for the CONCACAF Central American Cup, a new competition as of 2023, which pins Central America's top football teams against each other. Last year, four Honduran clubs qualified, although only one of them made it out of the group stage, FC Motagua. They were knocked out by Panama's Independiente in the quarterfinals. If a team made it far enough in this competition, they could qualify for North America's top club competition, the CONCACAF Champions Cup. Back to league football in Honduras. At the end of both tournaments within Liga Nacional, the bottom team from the aggregate table is relegated to the Liga de Ascenso de Honduras, the second tier of Honduran football. At this level, teams are split into six groups of six teams each based on geographic zones. From what I can gather, these teams play the others in their groups twice before the top two teams in each group, plus the top four third place teams, move on to a round of 16 playoff. Teams are randomized and play a two-leg round of 16, then a two-leg quarterfinal, a two-leg semifinal, and finally a two-leg final to determine a tournament champion. This league also operates an Apertura and Clausura tournament, and at the end of each, the two winning sides play each other in a single game to determine who is promoted to the Liga Betcris. If the same team wins the Apertura and Clausura, they are automatically promoted. At the end of both the Apertura and Clausura, the bottom team from each group of six is placed into a final aggregate table. From there, the worst two teams from the entire Ascenso are automatically relegated. According to Football Manager, if that's a source that you trust, teams at this level vary between being fully professional and semi-pro. Finally, there is the third tier of Honduran football, the Liga Mayor de Honduras. According to one source I found, there can be as many as 200 teams at this level of football. That's because this level consists of multiple leagues and tournaments. Things start out locally, with local leagues that can be found in municipalities throughout Honduras's 18 departments. The champions and runners-up of each of these local leagues qualify for the departmental tournament. Details are scarce about how many games and teams participate at this level, but what I can tell you is that at the end of this tournament, the winners and runners-up of each departmental tournament move on to a regional tournament. Here, teams are split into five regional tournaments based on geography. 
Eventually, five winners are selected, which then turns into four because two of these winners play each other, with the winner moving on. Finally, there is the Interregional Final, which consists of two games. In the first game, the North Regional Champion plays the West Region Champion. In the second game, the Center East Champion plays the Southern Region Champion. The winner of each of these games is promoted to the Liga de Ascenso de Honduras. At this level, it can be assumed that all teams are either semi-pro or amateur. Besides its men's competitions, there is allegedly a women's football league in Honduras. I know there is because of this article from the men's Liga Betcrease website. It appears that a women's league started in 2022, but I've had no luck finding more information about its structure, how many teams there are, etc. If you know anything about this league, let me know in the comments below. Honduras used to have two cup competitions, but now it appears that they have none. The oldest of them was the Honduras Cup, also known as the President's Cup or Presidente Copa, your standard knockout competition played between 64 teams from the first, second, and third divisions of Honduran football. Started in 1968, the competition was played just nine times between its first year and 2014. It was then relaunched in 2015 and played several seasons in a row before being cancelled in 2019. Though it has not happened since, an article from January 2024 says the competition could be returning soon. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. There was also the Honduran Super Cup, a preseason match played between the winner of the Honduran Cup and the top club from the aggregate table of the league. It's been played only six times since 1997, and its last iteration was in 2019. I have not found any information about it since, so I assume that it is no more. Like many other Latin American nations, football is the most popular sport in Honduras, and teams can be found all over the country. Most of its football infrastructure is on the older side, but some notable stadiums that host top-level clubs include the 35,000 capacity Estadio Nacional José de la Paz Herrera Usles in Tegucigalpa, home of Olimpia in Matagua, and the 21,500 capacity, Estadio General Francisco Morazan in San Pedro Sula. By far the most successful club in Honduras is Tegucigalpa side Olimpia, who have 38 professional league titles. This count includes both the Apertura and Clausura titles from the last two seasons. Olympia has also had success in North America's top club competition, winning the CONCACAF Champions Cup twice in 1972 and 1988 respectively. The club also won the CONCACAF League twice before that competition was abandoned in 2022. The country's second most successful side are Olympia's stadium mates, Motagua, who have 18 professional titles. It is believed that football was first introduced in Honduras by English sailors in 1896, who arrived at Puerto Cortez. After they introduced the game to some locals, interest began to sprout up, and a few primary schools around the country began teaching the sport to their students. The country's first professional teams began forming in the early 1900s, including the country's oldest active club, Olympia who were founded as a baseball team in 1912 before transitioning into a football team in 1917. In 1921, the country's national team made its debut, but it wasn't until 1935 when an official football governing body was formed in the country. That organization eventually became FIFA affiliated in 1946. A year later, a proper football league was formed in the country, though it would remain an amateur competition until 1965. Now, I don't talk much about national teams on this channel, but when covering Honduras, I have to mention perhaps the country's most famous footballing-adjacent moment, the football war it had with El Salvador in 1969. The very condensed version of this story is that El Salvador and Honduras were having some political issues prior to playing each other three times during the 1970 World Cup qualifying stage. El Salvador eventually won the series two games to one, and on the day of the last game, which El Salvador won 3-2 in extra time, El Salvador also dissolved all diplomatic ties with Honduras. Less than three weeks later, a military campaign began, which targeted locations in Honduras. Four days later, a ceasefire was arranged, and the football war, also known as the Hundred Hours War, was finished, but not before an estimated 3,000 people had lost their lives. If you want to learn more about this incredible conflict, there are at least two videos on YouTube with millions of views each that go into much more detail than I have. Now let's return to talking about the Honduran Football Pyramid. 
I haven't found any specific language regarding foreign player restrictions, but I can tell you that according to Transfer Market, no team in Liga Nacional has more than five foreign players on their roster. There is a mandatory participation rule for U20 players, stating that at least one player under the age of 20 must play at least 540 minutes during a given top flight tournament, which equals out to about six full games. Teams are also prohibited from registering more than six players who are also registered on their reserve teams. According to Transfer Market, only 38 players in Liga Nacional, or 12.8% of all participants, are considered foreign. The majority of them are Argentinians. Players also hail from other South American countries like Uruguay, Colombia, Brazil, Paraguay, Chile, and Bolivia. There are other Central Americans from countries like Panama, El Salvador, and Belize, as well as players from the United States and St. Kitts and Nevis. The top scorer in Liga Nacional history is Wilmer Velasquez, who scored 196 goals in the league, all of them with Olympia. Not far behind with 186 goals is Yeri Bengston, who is still active and playing for Olympia. While a majority of recent call-ups to the Honduran national team play their club football within Honduras, other players can be found playing in the MLS and the USL Championship, in Colombia, in Saudi Arabia, as well as in top European leagues in Spain, Portugal, France, Switzerland, Scotland, Romania, and Turkey. For those who can't go to games, Liga Nacional games are broadcasted domestically on Canal Deportes TVC, a subscription-based channel operated out of Honduras. For those outside of the country, Liga Nacional games are broadcasted on Centro America TV and Fox Deportes. The streaming services Fubo TV and Fanatis carry these channels if you don't have cable. Plenty of up-to-date highlights can be found on YouTube through Deportes TVC's official channel and through the Liga Betcris de Honduras channel. Well, that's it for Honduras. If you enjoyed the episode-by-demand direction we've gone in, let us know which country you'd like to see us cover next. In the meantime, make sure to give us a like and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.